a time. The fight against corruption will succeed or fail on how professionals deal with it. This is why, this is to say that this important agenda will depend on the commitment and determination of professionals tasked with, the, with, with its management. As an administration, we made deliberate investments in all governance institutions to equip them with the human, technical, and financial ability to prosecute the fight against corruption independently. Sometimes, there have been attempts to profile the political war waged against William Ruto to be the war on corruption, or vested interests hijacking the war on corruption and turn it into a war against government development programs and projects. In the attempt to wage this convoluted version of the war on corruption, many government programs and projects, as well as many innocent public servants and professionals, become casualties. My constant assertion that the war on corruption must be fact-led and evidence-based and in accordance with the law. How can any reasonable person have a problem with the truth, with facts, with evidence, and with the law if you are genuinely fighting corruption? The war on corruption is an integrity war. A war on corruption that lacks integrity ceases to be a war on corruption and becomes corruption itself. An integrity war waged selectively, using convenient cooked truths with political targets in mind, is impunity. Impunity is the son of corruption, and both should have no place in civilized society. In 2010, we gave ourselves a constitution that commits us to be a nation of laws, of values, and of sound institutions. We are categorically a nation of the rule of law, not the rule of men. The practice of walking backwards on the rule of law, where a target is first identified, and then offenses formulated, and then evidence constructed, is a dangerous manifestation of impunity. Our political competition has evolved the weaponization of corruption for political competition. 